रविशंकर She is Arif Ab Dr. Arif Abdulkam, madam sir, uh, or uh, FDP organizing secretary. Yeah, yeah, yes. Sir. <laughs> I was talking to her. Yeah, yeah. Madam, are you able to see the screen now? Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. I'm sharing the intro slides, sir. उटमेंट Hearty welcome to the eminent speaker of today's session, Sri Girija Patro sir. Let me take the delight of introducing Dr. Girija Patro sir. Dr. Girija Patro sir, head of NDDS department, Naprod Life Sciences Private Limited, Mumbai, Maharashtra. To deliver a lecture on the topic entitled "Novel Approaches in Liposomal Formulations: An Industry Perspective." Now I request Dr. Ravi Shankar sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmaceutics, to present the brief profile of dr patro sir good morning to anand all myself dr kera vishankar faculty of department of pharmaceutics and biotechnology welcome you all to our second day online ftp program which is being conducted by department of pharmaceutics and biotechnology in association with siddhartha pharma innovation and incubation center at kvsr siddhartha college of pharmaceutical sciences vijayawada it's my privilege to introduce today's speaker sri girija prasad patra sir sir has got vast experience in formulation and manufacturing of liposomal drug delivery systems coming to his academic credentials sir did his bpharm from bahrampur university odisha mpharm from biju patnaik university of technology roorkela odisha and presently sir is pursuing phd from jain to hyderabad to his credit sir has got several research publications in national and international journals of reputation sir is having rich experience of more than 17 years in development of complex injectable formulations sir is having a good experience in formulation development of emulsions liposomes nanoparticles and microparticle based drug delivery systems at present sir is working as head of ndds naprod life sciences private limited mumbai maharashtra sir now i request you now i request our today's speaker to deliver his valuable scientific talk and enlighten us with his knowledge on liposomal drug delivery systems sir please uh, share your screen and uh, thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir Okay, sir. Please uh, share your screen. Yeah. Is it okay now? Can yes, sir. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> shall we start? Yeah. Please make it uh, full screen, sir. Now it is full screen, no? Uh, put in a slide, a slide show. Slide show, sir. Slide show. Option. F five, sir. This is okay. Control F five. Shift, shift. No, normal F five, sir. You have F five option, sir. Uh, otherwise, sir, at sixty eight percent, we are having one, uh, sir. At right side. Yeah. Bottom right side. Yes, yes, yes. There is one option, sir. There are three options. The last option, sir. Correct, correct, correct. 
have yeah. made it uh, yeah. quite right. so, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Uh, that one only, sir. Is it okay now? No, sir. One second, you click it, sir. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Uh, um, no, sir. No, sir. Okay, sir. Just start, sir. Is it okay now? No, sir. Actually, it's not a full screen. Okay. Sir, first line low F five and button on to choose sir. Adi press end sir. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Now full screen number one. Sir, this time. Sir, just carry on, sir. Carry. On. So this is the second slide. Are you uh, able to see this? Yeah, we are seeing the first slide, sir. Okay, so this is the micellar slide, right? Uh, no, actually, we no, are able no, to see no, only first slide. Put the uh, main tight slide, sir. Yeah, yeah, one minute, one minute. Now we change to third slide. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Is it full screen now? It's okay, sir. I think the this is the second slide, slide, right? Uh, okay, slide, uh, this is the first slide, sir. You, you carry on, sir. Sir, you come out of that uh, full screen, sir. Just to uh, carry on with the slides, sir. Yeah. This is my slide. My slide. Ah, uh, yes, from here. Yeah. You can see the first. Are you able to see this? Yeah. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. So let's start. Okay. Sir, it is in the first slide. Sir. Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting. So let us start the topic. Uh, it's more about the relevant uh, topic towards liposome that we have been doing for so many years. Okay, so uh, I'll be taking you through. So let's start with some fundamentals. Like uh, uh, when we take a surface, and we all know what is a micelle. So um, uh, they have both hydrophilic head groups and lipophilic tail groups. Now, beyond a certain concentration, they form a CMC. Uh, they form a micelle. So that's called a triple micelle concentration. So this we are very well known. And we do every day in day out a lot of experimentation in the lab, and we do a lot of work at the home, like cleaning the clocks and all that. So there uh, we use micelles. Now they have a typical geometry. Now what we have is a hydrophilic head group and a lipophilic tail group. Now. Uh, there are certain there is a parameter called critical packing parameter. So this critical packing parameter, if you can see this, uh, there is something called as a molecular volume of the hydrophobic part. Okay, this part where we have mentioned the V and a uh, interfacial hydrophilic head group part that is A0 and the length of the hydrophobic chain. So this is more of a theoretical perspective, but in general, what happens is if the a value of critical packing parameter that p value is low that means less than 1.3 then it's a fine then it forms a spherical micelle if it is between 1.3 to 1.2 that means little higher the critical process for a critical packing parameter then it forms cylindrical micelles if the value is between 1. Uh, sorry 0.5 to 1 then these are of truncated cone shape and these form flexible bilayers or vesicles are formed. Now, beyond this, if the value increases, if the CPP value is more than or close to one or more than one, they will either form a planar micelle, a planar bilayer, or it will form an inverted micelle. So, what we are interested in generally from the perspective of a liposome, the CPP value between 0.5 and 1 is acceptable to us. Okay. So now when, uh, see, for example, in general, what we use for preparation of a liposome is a phospholipid. So liposomes are nothing but a self-assembled nanostructures which contain some hydrophilic part and tissue, and 
uh, hydrophilic part at the outside also. So sometimes they are lactalized, but majority of the time they are in a liquid state or uh, a viscous state. Now, if you see, if you have a look at this uh, phospholipid, for example, at the central part, the glycerol backbone is there. So, to the glycerol part, one you have two phosphor, two uh, fatty acids, it can be either both can be stearic acid, stearic acid, palmitic acid, meristic acid, it can be anything else. The other part is a phospholipid and a choline group. Okay, so this is how it's called as a phospholipid. Okay, now these when we dissolve in a particular solvent or we do hydrate with water, they form uh, liposome. How they are different from mycelis is in mycelis you will have only this kind of a structure like one polar head group which will be on the outer side and the non-polar tail group which will be towards the interior. Now you have an opposite phenomena also here. So both you have head groups towards the exterior of liposome and the interior of the liposome and the tail group that is non uh, the hydrophobic part assembled together. So that's how a closed purple is formed. Closed Sphere is formed, those are called liposomes. So, in between this aqueous, uh, in between this liposome, the central white part that is aqueous core, and the outside, the uh, screen, whatever is the uh, white part, so that is also again you have a hydrophilic uh, uh, part that is the uh, uh, aqueous layer. Now, how a liposome is formed? Liposome is formed due to hydrophilic, hydrophobic interaction between liquid liquid and liquid water molecules. Basically, what happens? You have these head groups, they love water, so there is no problem. You have tail groups which contains fatty acids, they are uh, non hydrophobic or lipophilic, they don't like water, so they will, but they want to get away from water. In that effort, they form a micelle or they form a liposome. So these are the structures which prevent the exposure of non hydrophilic part to water. So that they are away from, uh, as much as possible, they are away from the uh, water. Okay, so that's how these nano SM groups are formed. Liposomes are formed due to hydrophilic or hydrophobic interaction. The symmetric membranes are preferred to be flat and energy is required. So something which is flat will be first formed. And it needs a lot of energy, like you need to apply heat or homogenization, sonication, any form of heat is required to make them bend or to make them form a circular liposome. They, because when you go for a size reduction, you know, there will be a lot of uh, surface pressure and they will tend to break or leak or they will not have sufficient strength in the bilayer. So to make the bilayer little more strong or more rigid, we add a uh, sterol, for example, cholesterol, we add it. Now, what is the advantage of a liposome? Advantage of a liposome is we can add, uh, we can incorporate amphiphilic drugs, which are either towards the outer periphery or towards the inner periphery. There are hydrophobic um, drugs. Uh, they will be at the core. So because there, there are uh, possible with these red ones, there is a uh, fatty acid that the uh, core, so the, there it can remain. Hydrophilic uh, drugs can be entrapped in, inside the in, interior core of the liposome. So you can uh, have a lot of flexibility in relation to the liposome, in relation to the drug. A uh, lot of drugs can be loaded, but it's not so easy. Okay, for example, I'll tell you uh, one example the absorption which we have been working for last uh, 17 years. It's a very long story. In India, it's, it was not so easy to make life present those days because its presentation is uh, related to a more perspective of the industry perspective. How do we look at the liposome? So these are still the liposomes. So for example, what happens, these hair-like structures are due to polyethylene glycol, that is the MPEG DSP, which is there as a part of the membrane. So DSP is a part of this bilayer and MPEG is uh, protruding out towards the uh, aqueous core of the sorry, both towards the aqueous core of the liposome as well as the outside the liposome. This makes the liposome more hydrophilic. So it escapes the reticular endothelial system's recognition. So apart from DSP, we have uh, hydrogenated soya phosphatidylcholine, we have cholesterol. So cholesterol makes the bilayer more rigid and HSPC is the component which forms the liposome. Okay. So now HSPC, why it is hydrogenated? Because when it is hydrogenated, the thermal degradation of a phospholipid is little lower. HSPC is having a TG value of something close to 52 degrees. So it is fairly stable once the liposome is circulating in the body. 
Okay. Now, what happens is inside this core, the red part, we have doxorubicin uh, drug. This is a case study I'm just presenting. So, uh, this is uh, doxorubicin is in the interior core of the lacrosin. The picture is so big, but if you look at the scale, the size in general, what we get is around 85 nanometer. The innovator claims it as less than 100 nanometer. Of course, it depends on the method of analysis, either you are measuring by uh, scanning electron, uh, sorry, what do you call uh, transmission electron microscope or by a, um, uh, what do you call, photon correlation spectroscopy like data size. It depends on that, but in general, uh, photon correlation spectroscopy is used. You know, photon correlation spectroscopy, when we measure the particle size, around the average particle size is somewhere close to 85 nanometer. Okay. Now, this is this big, it is not so big, you cannot see even under a normal optical microscope, you need a, a transmission electron microscope with at least 40,000 to 50,000 magnification. In general, we do it at a 1 lakh magnification and we take an image of the lipogen. Still, these hair-like structures you cannot see. Okay, but it's the representation of a lipogram, uh, hydrophobic, what you call, uh, most effective, the first approved nanoparticulate uh, drug delivery system was uh, doxorubicin liposome. And uh, we made a generic version of this product. Now, as I told, if you go from the periphery to the core, so we have a lot of uh, polyethylene glycol, the respective thousand is on the surface, which makes the liposome more hydrophilic. At the center, or the bilayer is composed of um, HSPC, hydrogenated soya phosphatidylene, cholesterol, and uh, BSP, BSP, which is attached to the center. Now, inside this, the liposome, we have uh, ammonium sulfate, little bit of ammonium, more of sulfate, and the drug is in the form of a precipitated form. Okay. Now, because of the size, the size is so small, that is 80 to 90 nanometer, this can be safely injected because this is used for as an anti cancer agent. So, uh, this can be safely injected in uh, IV route. Okay, so once it is injected in the IV route, this will have a long circulation in the body. Now, what happens is uh, because of this hydrophilic chain group, the reticular endothelial system recognition is a little bit prevented. It's not 100% prevention, but majority of the liposome get a lot of chance to be circulated, be circulating in the body. So, any liposome you inject that will go into the bloodstream. But if the surface is not so much made intentionally hydrophilic, then they will be recognized by the reticular endothelial system. So before it reaches the cancer target, it will be removed by the reticular endothelial system. So that's what the original innovator also faced a problem. So later they came out with this uh, uh, technology. Now, uh, and let's imagine you remove the MPEG part. For example, we take only HSPC and uh, uh, what do you call uh, cholesterol? We can still make liposomes, we can extrude them, we can make uh, smaller liposomes, we can uh, create an anion gradient. Through the anion gradient, we can uh, introduce drug into the body. But once it is injected into the body, what happens is the uh, liposomes are removed very rapidly by the reticular endothelial system. So once they are removed very rapidly from the uh, bloodstream, they will not get significant advantage of going or uh, targeting the uh, cancer site. So that will be the disadvantage. So that's why this is called a stilt liposome, which escapes the recognition of the reticular endothelial system. So this is where uh, I believe uh, towards the end also I will repeat it. it uh, they took almost like eight years, the innovators took eight years to develop a system like this, which can escape the recognition of reticular endothelial systems and uh, uh, gains a long circulation uh, what you call uh, characteristic uh, of the liposome and the as long as they are uh, moving in the body so the liposome the drug will not come out of the liposome so this is the another thing so they get a lot of chance of they will be circulating in the body for quite some time because of that what happens your uh, residence time of the rehab increases significantly that is number one and the during the circulation, as long as they are in the bloodstream, the liposomes the, or drug will not leak. I don't say it is 100% will not leak, but majority of the drug will be remaining in the encapsulated form, which was funded even up to 128 hours. The drug doesn't leak out so easily in the bloodstream. So they are still in like a balloon. Imagine a balloon which contains nitrogen. So this is also nanostructures which contains uh, doxorubicin drug and which uh, will be moving in the body for quite some time till it reaches the cancer cell because of enhanced formation and retention effect. So once it reaches the cancer cell, the drug will be released. 
Now that's very easy to say. Like once it is, uh, once it reaches the uh, what you call cancer cell, it will be released. But now why? Why it will be released? Correct. The question is, as long as it was there in the blood circulation, the drug was not releasing. Then how come the drug will release in the uh, cancer cell? So a little bit understand uh, more about this. This is uh, this uh, goes through a passive targeting. That means it is not done through active targeting process. We don't attach uh, something like a monoclonal antibody on the surface or a protein which gets a lot of affinity towards the tumor cell. So this product particularly goes into the cancer cell through a passive targeting process. In a passive targeting process, what happens in a normal vasculature? Suppose this is the uh, blood vessel. This is the normal vasculature. Uh, let's assume this is a normal vasculature. So, so fenster are very closely associated. They are more like this. Okay. The moment you have a cancer cell, because of new angiogenesis, what happens? Uh, the uh, cells grow very fast to meet the requirement of the blood supply. The new blood vasculature is created. So, because it is done in a hurry, hurry, or in a haphazard manner, there will be some leakages. So, the fenster will not be complete. Like if you see at the, the right side, you have two uh, smaller ones, there is a gap, and then there is a, a continuation of the fenster. So, these gaps, uh, we taken by uh, these liposomes taken advantage of these gaps. Okay. So, because of these gaps, these small or tiny uh, nano uh, range my, the lipogons will escape into the uh, tumor cell. Okay, tumor interstitium they will be going. Now, wherever there is a normal cell or there is a normal vasculature, so this layer is intact. So, these liposomes cannot permeate or come out of the uh, blood vessels. And wherever there is a leakage, so that's why they, they will be uh, circulating in the body for quite some time. Because of the hydrophilic nature or the pegylation on the surface, the liposomes will not be recognized by the reticular endothelial system, so they will not be rapidly removed from the bloodstream. So they get a lot of chance to go through this multiple times through the same uh, blood vessel. And ultimately, wherever there is a fenster or the, wherever there is a leakage like this, okay, they will penetrate through them and they will go into the cancer cell. In general, what happens, uh, wherever there is an injury also, there is an inflammation also, we have this kind of situation, but let's assume a patient doesn't have an injury. So, if, uh, so that's, uh, or wherever there is a leakage like corner plant reset, these are the some size of uh, disadvantages. But other than that, suppose there is a cancer cell, there is a leaky vasculature, through the leaky vasculature, the liposomes will go and sit in the cancer cell. Now the question is, as long as they were circulating in the blood vessel, the drug was not coming out of this. Now why the drug will come out of for, for the liposome once it enters into the tumor cell? The interesting part is that the tumor cells will have a lot of hunger like a bakasu. They want to eat, they want to utilize any source of energy. Okay, So they will be taking that source of energy. So for example, you have these phospholipids. So lipid is a good source of energy, so they will be consuming that. This is one hypothesis. Even the innovator, the Barnholz, the, the, um, Professor Barnholz also doesn't know, but this is one of the hypotheses what he makes. Like for example, these uh, phospholipids are there on the surface of the liposome. The cancer cells wants to take away the phospholipids will be there, so they will start eating away the uh, phospholipids or cholesterol. So that, that's how once there is a leakage is punched on the liposome surface and the drug is leaked out. Sometimes the people say that there is an ion gradient because of which the drug will for the certain different ion will go inside the liposome and the drug will come out. So these are the hypothesis. But in general, uh, to tell a story, what looks fascinating is the uh, liposomes accumulate in the tumor uh, tissue. Tumor will have a lot of hunger. So they will eat away the surface phospholipid. In that uh, due course, the uh, pores will be punched under the surface of liposome. And the drug will kind of come out of the liposomes and the drug will start acting in the tumor cells. So, this is uh, a, a beautiful way of narrating the story, uh, but you don't know what happens exactly in the tumor cell. But somehow, people have studied because of uh, this, the liposomes accumulate in the tumor cell and the tumor recession will happen. Okay? Now, what is responsible for this accumulation? One is size. Okay, they are very small, that's how they can penetrate uh, through the leakages, okay, or the fence wherever there is a leakage, they can uh, penetrate through the leakage, but because of the size, they are very small. Second one is pegylation. 
And that means the liposome surface is regulated something like polyethylene glycol 2000 because of this, uh, they are becoming they become hydrophilic. They become hydrophilic, so that's why the, the reticular endothelial system recognition is prevented and they will have long circulation time. Then the third point is entrapment of drug inside the liposome. Suppose the liposome is circulating in the body, in the blood stream, the liposomes are not taken away by the reticular endothelial system. Still, let's assume that the uh, drug is slowly leaching out of the liposomes as long as it is there in the, so once it is there in the circulation. Because of this, what happens? So, the drug will be again leaking out of the uh, liposome and over a period of time, it's, it becomes more like a normal uh, non-liposomal drug delivery system. Because see, doxorubicin is not a great call. Doxorubicin is highly water soluble. There is no fun in making a liposome. If the liposome is leaking the drug, okay. So that means as long as it is circulating and till it goes and sits in the cancer uh, tissue or the uh, interstitium, so uh, until that time the drug has to be there inside the liposome, okay. So that's the uh, then the stability of the liposome. So now I make it. Okay, so the liposome is stable for 10 days, liposome is st stable for 20 days, liposome is stable for 6 months, it doesn't make any sense, commercial viability is not good. So the liposomes in general has to be stable forever. That's my expectation, for, 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 particularly from this kind of, we have studied up to 3 years, 5 years also, the liposomes, so somebody, sometimes major, majority of the people, they ask you suspicion, I say yes. That's it sediment, I say no. That's where people generally get confused. So they are so small because of the Brownian motion, because of the spheric stabilization, because of the electrostatic stabilization. The liposomes, when they come together, they will be hitting together and they will be bouncing back. So that for entire life. So you keep it for years together under refrigerated condition. If you keep it at 25 degrees, what will happen? Because of the degradation of drug, the color will change. Otherwise, the color will stay like a slight pinkish color, more of a dark red one. So that's a mixture of color. And they will be stable. Essentially, they will never be sedimenting. So that's the beauty of the product. If the product is made in a proper manner, if it is not made, then I don't call it as a uh, generic product or equivalent product. Okay. In general, how do we make a liposome? Please, uh, in a laboratory setup, even we also started somewhere like this uh, in the plant uh, uh, in the industry. So we make a solution of um, these phospholipids, preferably in chloroform because they dissolve very fast. We put it then, uh, we put them in a uh, round bottom flask and then uh, make it in a rota vapor or make a thin film and we evaporate the solvent. Okay. Then we uh, hydrate it. You add some buffer. Okay. Or you add water also, they will be hydrated. Then we sonicate it, uh, we get a coarse liposome. Then we uh, sonicate it, we ultrasonication. We get a smaller particle. We uh, do a high pressure homogenization to get a smaller particle. We do an extrusion to get a smaller particle. These are the general ways. But the limitation of this approach is how big will be your vessel? Like in a laboratory setup, what we do is we make a liposome with 1 gram of phospholipid, 2 gram of phospholipid, you have up to, uh, we operated up to 20 liters of round bottom class. But what you can use is something like 20 grams, 30 grams, so that there essentially comes a limitation of scaling it up. And there will be a lot of residual solvents which you cannot ensure complete evaporation once you go on scaling it up. So this is the major disadvantage. The film hydrogen is not used. But however, it's for fundamental research, okay, yes, this is fine. Okay. Now, the next approach is high pressure homogenization. High pressure homogenization, what happens is it by more like an impaction factor. So, high pressure homogenization, but don't imagine I'm using a very big jargon or something like this. This is a very simple, like you imagine the World Trade Center uh, collapse. Or you imagine our school days. And then, teacher music, okay, nowadays, uh, teachers don't hit children, otherwise, uh, a lot of case will happen. So now what happens is uh, in our school days, they use it for bit as uh, like uh, what we call it, blue, black, red, uh, whatever is the color you can imagine. They use it for bit as like anything, right? So we use it to call red. So that's how we were good at mathematics, we were good at so many things. I don't say current generation people are not good at anything, but those were the days. Now, in general, even if the teacher uses it to be cool, when he becomes angry, he uses it to throw a softy at us. Imagine a teacher throws 
just ask this. We just because we were good at cricket, playing cricket, so suddenly we will do like this. Uh, the uh, chapstick will um, miss us and it will hit the uh, ball. What happens? The chapstick will break into pieces. The same thing happens when a flight or a um, uh, hit a World Trade Center, the entire building collapses. So the moment uh, there is a lot of momentum, there is mass, there is velocity, so a lot of uh, things act. Similarly, you make a course liposome, you pass through a high pressure homogenizer, for example, this part, okay, like because of the Benelli situation, when you narrow it down, when we are like gardening, the, um, uh, we are uh, putting some water in the uh, garden, so what we do is we squeeze the tube, so automatically it moves like a jet. So when the path is narrowed down, so automatically it will be uh, having a lot of flow. So because to facilitate the flow or to overcome the resistance, the pump will be pumping from the other side. Because of this, what happens? The liposome will hit a wall. Okay. So this is the same. This is the wall. It will fit like anything. So because of this impaction, the liposomes will, the surface will break. Again, they will recirculate. Break. Again, they will recirculate. So that's how the liposome, uh, the close liposomes will become finer liposomes. Right. So you start with something like a 25 micron or a 30 micron uh, coarse liposome, which you can see under a normal optical microscope. Even if you see under it, with a naked eye also, you can see there is a lot of uh, precipitation. You keep it for some time, they will sediment. So that means they are very coarse liposomes what we initially manufacture, either by film hydration method or by ethanol injection method, whatever is the method. So to size reduce it, okay, we pass it through a high pressure organizer because of the impaction the uh, liposomes will break. But now the problem in this method is, you have, uh, suppose we take a chop piece, full chop piece, we hit it. Suppose it has broken into two pieces. Now, again, if we hit, it will break into four pieces. Again, we take the smaller pieces and we start hitting, it will go on breaking, till it becomes a powder. So that means you cannot have a precise control on the size distribution. I'm not talking about the average particle size. I'm talking about the size distribution. Like, for example, 4, 5, and 6, you take the four, average of 4, 5, and 6, the average is 5. You take the average of 3, 5, and 7, the average is still 5. You take 2, 5, and 8, the average is still 5. But the distribution is becoming more and more wide. Right? So that's why European agency, they don't ask, they don't care for what is your average particle size. They ask your particle size distribution has to be same. Suppose innovator says it is 4, 5, my size is between 4, 5, and 6. Our particle size also has to be within 4, 5, and 6. That is D10, D50, and D90. 10% of the particles, 50% of the particles, 90% of the particles should be within this range. So when you match 4, 5, and 6, automatically your average is 5. Right? So that's how the average particle size is automatically taken care. But if the average size is taken care, it doesn't ensure that your particle size distribution is also taken care. So this is the biggest disadvantage of a high-pressure homogenizer which you cannot control the size distribution. You can achieve something like 85 nanometers within 4 to 5 cycles. That's not a great thing as on today. Those particles, they also be stable, but you will not be matching as a genetic product or you will not have a precise control on batch to batch within the same laboratory, within the same manufacturing facility. You have, uh, today you have a different D10, tomorrow different D10, tomorrow different D10, D50, all these values will change. So this is the disadvantage of a High pressure homogenizer system, which is used to reduce the size. Okay. Now the next thing, what is generally done is a, a extrusion process, which we have been doing for so many years. We have different machines, like you can start from 10 ml, you can start from you can increase to 100 ml, you can go up to liters together. You can start from a very small one, like a 25 ml membrane. And you can go up to 23 and then, then. And you can put all four extruders uh, at once. You can connect them parallel. It's uh, a lot of things can be done. Now, what happens in extrusion? Uh, again, the same process will start from the post liposome. You have larger liposomes. Okay. So those liposomes are extruded through a membrane. So I'm there, uh, madam. Uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, okay. Sir. It's audible. Sir. Now, what happens is uh, we prepare a, a large liposome. So, uh, when you hydrate it, what happens is uh, we prepare, uh, by default, uh, coarse liposomes are formed. 
these are varieties of size varieties of shape I imagine a amoeba it can shape it can take any shape of course it cannot take shape of a rectangle so any odd shape a multi vesicular anything anything can form the ones you hydrate so you don't have a, when you do a spontaneous hydration for example you dissolve uh, phospholipid in a solvent and you put some water what shape will be formed you cannot control right so you have the now this is the assume that this is a coarse lipoid in a coarse lipoid what happens you have smaller one bigger one unilamellar oligolamellar multilamellar different sizes different shapes you have a lot of things so that kind of thing doesn't work so you made that so that's called a coarse lipoid now what we do is we reduce the size so for size reduction what we can do is we can use a hydrosol homogenizer we can we discuss uh, that's a easy process but the disadvantage is we cannot control the size distribution now uh, what was the next approach what in general industry uses is called as a pore extrusion process in extrusion process what happens these coarse liposomes imagine this big liposome okay is passed through a pore now don't imagine that this is like a filtration membrane pore in a filtration membrane like for example in general also we use hclc solvent filtration or sample power protection filtration in hclc what we do is we filter it through a 0.25 micron or a 0.25 micron filter it's not like that in a 0.25 or a 0.25 micron filter what happens they are there are corrugated parts like imagine it's more like a higher by it's like a dot root you don't have a control on the pore size absolute pore size that's a nominal pore size of 0.2 to micron or 0.4 per micron that's one and second is the interesting part is in a normal filter what we use for a filtration or sterile filtration of the product the filters will have a corrugated part it's more like a twisted one some will be straight some you don't have a control on the so essentially every pore is not a straight pore but the membranes what we use for a extrusion process they are straight pores they are punched pores because of which they are straight pores okay it's more like a cylinder this is one pore this is a straight pore okay in between what will happen at wherever i mentioned two rt the uh, diameter will be little large but okay so for our ease of understanding let's imagine this cylindrical pore okay now what will happen wherever the uh, that is entering so there is called some itching like glass itching they are made hydrophilic by itching okay so they, uh, they will have uh, now for better understanding imagine there is a straight pore which is punched in a polycarbonate membrane these membranes in general can tolerate a pressure up to 5000 psi also without breaking but they will just look like this very thin film almost like a transparent membrane if you tear it like this that will be cut but once they are there in the extruder membrane holders they are so intact that if you pump it at something like 5000 psi also they will not break unless there is a a uh, sharp particle like a metal particle which pierces through them they will never break okay now what happens with the membrane holders the membrane uh, the once you apply the membrane holder will hold like this like a normal filtration membrane holder they will hold it very tight those pores are there now the, between the pores there will be a lot of gaps but let us imagine you have a pore this liposomes the coarse liposomes will now be extruded through this they will not be filtered remember here they will not be filtered once you filter this is like more like our p filtration the coarse particles will be there on the surface of the membrane right but here the extrusion process is all the particles have to go through the pores they are straight pores they will be squeezed through the pores there are imaginations like when it breaks at this point it will break now uh, there is something called as a lysis tension because when once these uh, liposomes try to go through the uh, what we call barrel like structure okay so there will be some uh, hard, uh, what we call um, uh, lubricating layer of water so the, because of this there will be much more squeeze because of this pressure there will break okay so there is something called as like a surface tension which develops the surface tension is higher than the lysis tension or the breaking tension on the membrane surface so that's how the bigger or the liposome bilayer will break and again they will recirculate break again recirculate like imagine a bigger balloon we break uh, once it ruptures no? what we do is uh, now we take a smaller piece and we make a smaller balloon it's like that only the bigger liposomes will break they will form a smaller liposomes again they will pass it through the pore and they will be uh, that will be get a particle size in general four to five part, uh, passes you get the desired particle size 
Okay. Now the point here is how what is the advantage of this method over a high pressure homogenizer? High pressure homogenizer it was continuously hitting. So even if it has gone below 50, it doesn't care. 50 also. It's going to be marrow bus 50 also breaks down to 40, 40 breaks down to 30. But let's imagine you have now a liposome which is of 50 nanometer. Now 50 nanometer earlier it was 25 micron or a 20 micron. Now something like one micron they were squeezing through that. So they were facing a lot of difficulties. So that's where it needed to rupture and form a reformulation. Now imagine they have undergone four to five cycles. The particle size has reached something like 50 nanometer. Once 50 nanometer goes through 50 nanometer pore, it will not go undergo further size reduction. So that's how now you can control, you can stop it at a particular size. So precisely years together, you will not believe from 2012 till my last gentle macro 2022. For last 10 years, we were doing the certain number of cycles. So you get the defined particle size distribution. That is the advantage of this method. But the only thing is that you get a lot of back pressure because when you are pressing it, you get a lot of back pressure. To overcome that pressure, you have to apply a lot of pressure. So because of the pressure, it will break. They will form smaller liposomes. They will fight uniform once they go below 100 nanometer. By default, all the particles are unilamellar. Liposomes will be formed. Defined particle size, defined lamellarity, defined particle size distribution, the liposomes will be formed. You can have a precise control on the exclusion on the particles of, uh, on the liposomal size. So that's the advantage of an extrusion process. Now people said the, so the, there are two, three mechanisms. Like once it is entering here itself, it will break. Okay. And the smaller liposomes will enter and come out. This is one approach. Second approach is it will just go like this squeeze and suddenly once the, the outer end when the pressure is released, they will break into liposome and they will come out. Or once after entering, the entire capsule has entered and inside that because of a lot of pressure, it will break. Whatever it is, the, the mechanism, nobody has seen what happens exactly. But these are all speculations because of which ultimately what we can see is the liposome should have uniform liposome as a defined particle size distribution. Right? So the to over to make this happen, what are the there is a certain bare minimum pressure. If the pressure is reduced below that, the liposomes will not pass through the pores and you will not get a particle size reduction. To make the membrane fluid, you have to use heat. Otherwise, they will become like a gel. Okay. It's very difficult to extrude the liposomes to a membrane. So this is the disadvantage. You need a costly pump, which has a lot of capacity to pump the liposomes through extruder membrane. You need to have a lot of heat, which is detrimental to the uh, liposome degradation. Okay. Now, to overcome this, see, in general, let me be very honest 99% of the industrial scale they follow this method of size reduction. But still, there is a new method which was originally used for uh, microparticle, uh, for microparticle preparation. Now, uh, people have started working. I know this company, there is a company called uh, Micropore Technology in UK. They have a collaboration with the University called Lobra University, the University of Oxford product. Now imagine you have a, a membrane, okay? You have pores in that, okay? Whatever is there uh, here, okay? And a chinna pro ma amam This is just like this, like an extrusion membrane. So you have a membrane which contains these pores, right? So imagine that you have a tube now. You have a tube. From which so that uh, there are holes uh, punched on the tube surface. Okay. Now, from the other side, from this side, you are pumping the liquid solution. Because it's a solution, you can just easily inject it at a precise rate, like 0.5 ml, 1 ml, 2 ml, whatever is the rate you want, you can inject it. Now, in the tube, from the other direction, imagine you are pumping water. Okay, so once the water comes in contact with this liquid solution, for example, liquid you have dissolved in dichloromethane, that's a solution. Once it comes in contact with water, the dichloromethane will diffuse out and it will spontaneously form liposomes. So this is a much more easier process, but you know, the uh, you need to have control on the pore size, which they can control up to 3 micron range also. So don't assume that can we pass something through 3 micron and we can get something like a nanometer. Yes, there are publications of even 2022, even we have seen in that particular lab. And so that's in a um, car uh, near the somebody called the Middle Scroll in YouTube. 
so that that has a very small team but uh, super little bit team so uh, the pores through which you pump something like three micron pores you get something like 80 nanometer product now what happens is the moment the droplet is going through this if you are pumping this water at a very faster rate they will now uh, take a the uh, uh, droplet before it is getting completely formed like what happens you uh, now imagine a very slow flow in a bullet or a pipette what happens first it will form a full droplet then only it will come out full droplet will be formed for allowing the droplet to form completely that's why they are bigger droplets now but the size of the droplet will depend naturally on the orifice of the, of the bullet but here if the orifice is small the droplet size will be small orifice is big the droplet will be big similarly uh, but here you are not allowing the droplet to come out completely so just a small droplet can small part of the droplet comes you are pumping lot of water so that's how the hydrated lipogen will come out this is this process in one shot your lipogen is formed you need not recirculate it multiple times because one shot the liquid has gone or uh, you get something like 80 nanometer 100 nanometer whatever you want you want a bigger lipogen you make the water flow slow or do increase the fluoride of this solution okay these are the techniques so here the lipogens are not exposed to a very high temperature because the moment it is out of the tube you can immediately cool it or bring it down to room temperature of course to uh, facilitate deeper dissolution of liquid you need to keep it at under hot condition so that's how a lipogen can be formed this is one of the new uh, technology which is catching up and uh, i'm sure that uh, in future a lot of companies will be using this now once the lipogen is formed what we do is in general test it towards uh, doxorubicin what we do is we create, create a ionic gradient then we put drug so the because of the ionic gradient the drug goes inside so that's called an active loading process in a passive loading process what happens your aqueous space will contain some drug okay the moment you are hydrating the lipid the drug uh, the aqueous core uh, the aqueous part will go inside the lipogen so once the aqueous part goes inside the lipogen because the aqueous part contains the drug so that will be encapsulated in the lipogen so that's called a passive loading process so this is uh, uh, what we call a passive loading process is not so effective because the volume is so small in a nano scale i can put lot of drug but wherever there is no option this is the only option now for passive loading But otherwise, when you can create a pH gradient, or when you can create an ionic gradient, and later once the lipogens are formed, the those nano units are formed, then you then you put drug, and after that, because of the ionic gradient, the drug goes inside. Okay. For example, in case of doxorubicin, what we do is we have ammonium sulfate. Now, once you hydrate, ammonium sulfate is there inside the lipogen as well as outside the lipogen. The outside uh, ammonium sulfate is removed by a process called dialysis. Now what happens after the, at the end of the dialysis process, you have a lipogen inside which you have a lot of ammonium sulfate. Outside, I don't say it is zero, but it is almost like negligible because of this ionic gradient. Uh, because of this ionic gradient is created, then you heat the lipogen, put the hot drug solution, the drug will go inside, and ammonia gas will come out. Now the interesting part is uh, ammonium sulfate will dissociate into ammonia ion and sulfate ion. So ammonium sulfate ion and ammonia ion because they are charged moieties, they will have less functional water retention coefficient. They cannot form a proton membrane. They cannot cover up the lipogen. Now what happens? Sulfate remains as sulfate. Ammonium ion and H4 plus dissociates into ammonia and H plus ion. If ammonia is neutral, that will come out of the lipogen and that gets exchanged with the doxorubicin drug. So once doxorubicin drug goes inside, now the trick here is. Suppose when you start, you have 100% drug outside and 0% of the drug is inside. Now the point here is, once the 50% of the drug goes inside, you should have a clear idea. More drugs should not go inside because now equal the uh, concentration of drug is there both inside the lipogen as well as outside the lipogen. But they have made in such a great technology they have used the drug. Whatever is there, the drug which has gone inside the lipogen, they will interact with H plus ions and sulfate ions which are present inside the lipogen. They will form a precipitate. Now what happens? The drug which is there outside the lipogen, they are in the molecular form. Drug inside the lipogen is in a precipitate form. The, the, again, the gradient will be created because the gradient is for the ionic form, the molecular form. More molecular form will go inside, more precipitation will happen. More molecular form will go inside, more precipitation will happen. 
Okay, so that's how almost 99% of the drug goes inside the liposome. Right, so that's how we get almost like 100% the drug loading inside the liposome. Now the next thing is, how do we sterilize it? In general, liposomes are sterilized by a filter sterilization process. Because if you heat it, something like 121 degrees, uh, something like this, for autoclaving end sterilization process, then uh, the phospholipids will degrade. Some people say that they do a gamma irradiation, but I believe that will also uh, degrade the phospholipids. In general, for a ease of process, what we do is we small filter them through a point to the microbe filter. It is so easy, you know, there is a lot of literature available uh, in the scientific domain. Making a liposome is not a great thing. But imagine you have a normal door anywhere in the classroom or in the college, anywhere. You imagine a normal human being who cannot enter the door. Can you imagine that? It's also something like this. So you prefer a filter sterilization process, you use a membrane nominal, uh, even if it's not absolute, it's a nominal filter. That means it will have a pore size of 220 nanometer. Like correct, it is 220, 0.22 micron, that means 220 nanometer. When imagine a 85 nanometer particle cannot go through a 200 nanometer particle, 220 nanometer pore. It's not so easy because of so many failures and after you see so many failures then you uh, come up with a liposome which can be easily filtered. And the interesting part is if you pass through one filter, if you do a filter validation part, you will not get it as a part of filter validation uh, study when you uh, Inoculate something like the power of seven microorganisms into the liposomal dispersion and filter it, you will not get a cell effluent even after passing through a point of the methyl filter. Because of the uh, what do you call uh, the uh, phospholipid presence of phospholipid, some like some organisms will escape. That's why we need to use two filters. Again, you use a filter on the online tip or filling. So once it is filtered, so just see, once you do an offline filtration, then it goes onto the filling machine. Just before filling, again it is filtered and immediately filled into the vials. Okay, and they are uh, sealed and uh, what they call stoppered and sealed. So that's how it happens. That's a very big subject. It's not so easy. Now the second part. Can I take a little more time, or uh, I need to close exactly at eleven thirty? Madam. No, sir. You can take, sir. Okay, okay. So you are there. Sir, please. Take, sir. I'm not hundred percent sure about that, but you are there. Okay. Right, madam. So, as a part of sameness characterization, so what we do is there are uh, there is something called as Q1, Q2, which very everyone is well versed, but there is a new concept. So, Q1 is, for example, innovator has got uh, doxorubicin, so you should also use doxorubicin. Innovator has used HSPC, you should also HSPC. You can say that I will use HSPC, it is not hydrogenated. No, it's not acceptable. So that's in general here you can support, you also use support. So that's called Q1. Okay. Qualitatively, you are saying. Quantitatively, he has used 2 mg per ml, you also should have 2 mg per ml. He has used 9.58 mg per ml of doxorubicin, you should also use 9, uh, sorry, 9.58 mg per ml of HSPC, you should also use 9.58 mg of HSPC. So that's called Q2. Now, Q3 is something is interesting. Now, he has got a rod like structure in the liposome after in the principle that means after the entire the, the complete drug is encapsulated within the liposome okay then you should also get a similar rod like structure or a bulk shaped liposome so let's skip some slides and for better explanation i'll tell you so imagine this like okay so this liposome and the innovator, you have a uh, one layer. So that is, uh, you also should have one layer. And in between, you should see this rod-like structure or a precipitate of doxorubicin and sulfate. You should also get a precipitate like this. That means your drug, his drug is presented as a precipitate of sulfate, that is doxorubicin sulfate precipitate in the form of a rod-like structure, precipitate structure. So we should also have, so that means a uh, similar structure, that means a 3D orientation inside the liposome also should be same. Okay, so uh, that's what the people look for, so that's called a Q3 uh, orientation part. Okay. Now, so uh, just I'll be quickly going through these slides, that is one is size and size distribution, you can measure it by uh, what you call uh, transmission electron microscopy. 
or you can measure it by uh, photon correlation spectroscopy you will get the average particle size you will get the d10 d50 d90 whatever you want d5 d10 d15 d20 d10 d50 d90 whatever you want you get it what is d10 10% of the particles are less than a particular size 50% of the particles are less than a particular size 90% of the particles are less than a particular size so if you control these three stages say d10 d50 and d90 so you are almost there you are matching with the innovator so that's uh, what we do in a size distribution next comes so these lipoforms uh, see in general sa and the drug rs is a basic thing that we do for every product even if you take a tablet capsule emulsion substance and everything we do a drug sa drug rs but here we do a liquid sa and liquid rs whatever is uh, there on to your right side okay so liquids what are the liquids if uh, in this example you have hspc you have cholesterol you have mpeg so we need to estimate whether they are present yes they are present that is q1 how much is present that is q2 okay so this is already done now the next part is because these are functional excipients what is meant by a functional excipient so that, that means if the phospholipids are not there or cholesterol is not there or mpeg is not there the particle will not have the same pharmacokinetic or pharmacodynamic activities what it has today okay so that's why these are called functional excipients now these phospholipids also degrade the way it degrades for the drug so when a drug degrades you get the degradant or an impurity which is formed okay i don't say it's an impurity it's a degradant which is formed okay similarly phospholipids for example hspc if you go back to the original slide of a phospholipid what happens is uh, you have something like this you have a structure like this correct okay so you this part can be detached so one of the fatty acid is detached like palmitic acid other part can be detached right or both can be detached so these are called lysophospholipids similarly in a uh, what is called mpeg also can degrade and that will form lysopectin okay so these are also degradants which you need to uh, we need to take care so like the drug we need to also estimate the degradants of the phospholipids right then what we need to do is uh, once the drug loading is done if i show you a lysosome like vial you will say you will uh, say he is making a pool of oil which is drug solution you cannot distinguish between a liposome and drug loaded or doxorubicin uh, to be very specific doxorubicin loaded liposome and a doxorubicin aqueous solution correct both will be absolutely red absolutely almost like transparent okay so now what we do is we need to estimate how much of the drug is there inside the liposome so that's called as entrap how much drug is free that's called as free drug so for that the simplest way is you pass it uh, through a side diffusion chromatography what happens the liposomes they are particles so they will come out come out of the column okay side diffusion uh, system and the like free drug molecules because they are in a molecular form they are not in a particular form the molecules will stick to the or get entrapped into the uh, particles and they will be uh, staying at the top like these red ones they will be on the top and uh, the blue is one uh, they, they, because they are lipoids they will come out of now let's assume your product uh, contains 99% of the uh, lipoids which are entrapped so 99% of the drug will be present in this fraction which comes out first later once you elute this unentrapped part whatever is small big whatever the percentage of the, uh, the unentrapped drug that will also elute out you should have a mass balance of 100% for both okay now next how much of sulfate has remained outside the liposome during dialysis how much of ammonium has remained outside the liposome during dialysis and how much of ammonia ion which has come out of the liposome during the drug loading this is also needs to be estimated okay then so this will indirectly estimate how much of uh, sulfate is there how much of ammonia is there inside the liposome so that means that will determine the interior ph of the liposome or interior the environment of the liposome which is essential for the stabilization of the product as well as the drug product in the sense phospholipids as well as the drug okay now dissolution so dissolution one of the factors is it is not always done i am repeating the statement it is not always done as a part of iv ivr okay for example in this product uh, there is no relevance of a dissolution as far as in vivo performance is concerned right 
so digital user another application of digital user is it's a quality control tool batch on batch you cannot do a in vivo study and release the pack so pattern batch consistency or the internal environment of the liposome how or how uh, if you want the drug to come out of the liposome so let's imagine how strong is the bile okay how strong is the gel inside the liposome these are the determining factors which determines how much of the drug will come out of the liposome now different mechanisms are added like you heat drug will not come you pull drug will not come you do a fracturing drug will not come you do sonication little bit of drug come now the way the drug was loaded because of iron gradient the same way you have to reverse it then only the drug will come out there what happens if you increase uh, the temperature that means applying some more heat then it becomes this bilayer becomes more flexible and more drug will come out you can do this dissolution at 37 degrees you can do, do the dissolution at 47 degrees that's where the catch lies so the 47 degrees it doesn't have any in vivo correlation right so but still it is done at 47 degrees 42 degrees as long as you are able to show discriminating capacity of the dissolution medium you can use any temperature any condition any that ph okay but that is used to test the quality of the product batch on batch okay there is no relevance to the in vivo uh, performance of the product okay in general now uh, basically because it's a parental product what we do is a sterility and beauty is essential there is uh, don't imagine don't assume that there is nothing great in this kind of product sterility beauty lo em undandi that's very simple no it's not very simple for example sterility how do you measure the sterility so you filter the product okay through a point to the matron and whatever is retained if the organisms are there then you find it as non sterile if there is nothing then it is sterile correct now let's imagine there are some smaller organisms or the, the normal organisms which can penetrate through the pores point to the matron pores because they are squeezed between two liposomes and they will just slide through the pores so that's a false negative kind of sterility so that's why what fda or any regulatory agency expects is you break open the liposome then you as you then you test the sterility now for breaking the liposome you cannot break the liposome just with a hammer so what you do you use a surfactant to break the liposome or you use a solvent to break the liposome if you use a solvent to, to break the liposome for sterility testing the disadvantage with the solvent is the solvent itself will kill the organism so that's again a false negative correct so we cannot use a solvent to break open the liposome now the only option is you use a surfactant to break the liposome all the drug will come out then you filter it now you don't have this escaping tendency so that's how we estimate the sterility now for this to make to prevent a false positive result you need to sterilize the surfactant solution which you are using for the sterility measurement So it's not so easy. So that needs a lot of um, understanding and a lot of experimentation. Similarly for BET, BET in general any surfactant doesn't come with a BET free sterile certification card. So here you have to use a solvent. But a solvent, for example, methanol with some heat or ethanol with some heat or chloroform with some heat. The problem is they will start interfering in the general process. So you have to optimize it such a way that you don't get positive to it. It doesn't interfere in your positive gel clot um, process. Uh, that that when you do a validation of the BT process, a uh, big estimation analytical method. Okay. So that's how you need to break open the liposome for sterility with the help of a surfactant for BT with the help of a help of a solvent. Okay. Now uh, next is advanced. Some there are some advanced characterization like internal pH because of the confidentiality. I cannot disclose uh, how it is done. Okay. Now this is one of my favorite uh, slides because uh, my photo is there. Okay. Now my photo is not there because I want to project me. So because you can see me live, this uh, this is not uh, for my photo presentation. But to imagine the background is a transmission electron microscope. it starts from the same floor okay so my height is something like 5 feet to 8 inches imagine the height of the transmission electron microscope it is almost close to 10 feet it has to run 24 by 7 into uh, at something like uh, 23 degrees plus or minus 2 degrees it needs liquid nitrogen 
Okay, you need to freeze the liposome at something like minus 240 degrees. Now, why this is required? You need to take an image of a liposome to understand whether the structures are like this. These are the liposomes. The drug loaded liposomes. These are the actual images on which we have worked and uh, we do a part of the, every batch quality control analysis. Okay. Now, for to take this image, let us imagine somebody is taking our uh, photo with a mobile. Nowadays, cameras are gone, so it's a mobile. Mobile is also sometimes called as a camera. Okay. So somebody is taking your photo. Suppose I move my face like this. What will happen? It will be a blurred image. Right? For that, I have to stand like this. Because I have control on myself, so I can stand like this. But we don't have a control on a liposome. Because of the Brownian motion, they will be moving very randomly. Now, to take an image, you need to freeze them. So, for freezing them, what we need to do is, we need to, there is a process called as a plunge freezing. They are at a normal room temperature. They are moving because of the Brownian motion. Hello, Patra, sir. Prashankar? Sir, accept all chains, sir. Sir, Chapan, sir. Ah, I'm going to call you, sir. Sorry. I'm already chasing, sir. I'm going to respond. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Ah, sir, please carry on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, is it there or again? I need to share the screen. No, sir, you're there. You have to share the screen. Share the screen, sir. Yeah, one minute. One minute. Otherwise, you can uh, share orally, sir, no problem. Patra, sir. Patra, 
मात्र सर पात्र सर सर ये ऑडियो इज म्यूटेड सर पात्र सर ये ऑडियो इज म्यूटेड या इज इट ओके नाउ या ओके 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 सो इफ पॉसिबल यू कैन प्रेजेंट इट फ्रॉम वेयर आई लिव ओके सर यू कैरी ऑन विद आवर स्लाइड्स आल्सो यू कैन कैरी ऑन नो प्रॉब्लम या या यस 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 ओके ओके नाउ नाउ आई विल टेल यू नाउ ओके so the last part was where we got stuck up is uh, like uh, Tem, we have Tem. these liposomes which needs one minute yeah so i'm visible right yeah okay so now what happens is uh, once we start taking a uh, we need to freeze the liposomes okay to take an image now for freezing the liposome what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, plunge freeze it that means we take the liposomes from somewhere like uh, 200 uh, sorry uh, from somewhere like room temperature 25 degrees to minus 240 degrees that is liquid ethane uh, kind of thing so uh, there was a professor uh, called uh, richard anderson who got nobel prize for this uh, invention so what happens you apply the liposome on a small grid that grid uh, that grid is suddenly plunged into liquid nitrogen and it is taken out so that means all your liposomes are frozen now this frozen liposome is in a uh, transmission electron microscope uh, stream of electrons okay in that stream of electrons uh, uh, the liposomes are uh, the uh, once the liposome are fixed uh, then the uh, stream of electrons will pass through them so once the stream of electrons pass through them uh, the image is captured okay so that's how uh, this machine what i was showing uh, runs into something like 50 crores that's a uh, very big investment but for in general for an in, uh, industry uh, something like 4 to 5 crores instrument is fine but it's like a lot of recurring cost for this kind of things to uh, what do you call uh, uh, be analyzed or set up a lab in the industry okay now the final part is uh, the industrial perspective of, uh, what is happening currently in the industry as far as the liposome research is concerned now what happens uh, uh, as part of introduction probably many of you uh, what is not told is that i was born in the year 1979 i went into the high school somewhere like 1989 i joined pharmacy in the year 1997 why my story i am telling my story so this is connected to the doxorubicin research what was done by professor baron holds professor gabizon there are so many uh, laurels are there okay basically it coincides something like this i was born in 1979 doxorubicin research also uh, started in the year 1979 when i went to the high school that is 1989 by that time the liposome research failed everybody said it's a waste research nothing can come out of this uh, venture investments all these companies big companies dropped the research ideas because the liposomes were not reaching the target anti cancer uh, the cancer site the they were clearing left and right they were cleared by the reticular endothelial system okay then uh, uh, but that that's how the drug leakage was there they were not reaching even small quantity was also not reaching the uh, desired uh, site of action that is the anti uh, that is the cancer site so that is uh, from my birth 1979 to uh, somewhere like when i started entering into the high school somewhere like 1980 89 the research started in 1979 research ended in 1989 story closed so everybody thought nothing we will get out of this product okay again in the 1989 probably they knew that i joined high school so they got again uh, some energy 
they started research so there were four centers at which the research was happening parallelly so uh, there was a very big, uh, big research centers the three of the research centers were uh, working on the prevention of reticular endothelial system recognition of the liposomes that means they wanted the liposomes to be long circulating so that was happening in liposome uh, technology inc okay that was happening uh, in the gabizons research center that was happening in canada these three research centers were working like a team they were working on how to avoid the recognition of liposomes by the reticular endothelial system there was another laboratory in the israel that is professor uh, um, uh, what is his name i forgot i always uh, have a disease of forgetting his name he is the uh, pioneer in this so uh, uh, this professor he did research in israel so his research was focused on how to put more drug into the liposome that is creating a uh, ionic gradient which i explained that is the aminum sulfate that ionic gradient you create and put more drug otherwise it's a, such a small vesicle small aqueous volume you cannot do drug loading by a passive drug loading process okay so that is uh, that professor's name is richard ba um, uh, barnholds so barnholds was uh, working on this uh, remote loading technology so three uh, groups were working on how to avoid the reticular endothelial system one group was uh, working on how to put more drug through a active loading process through a ionic gradient process into the liposome so that's where they could get a lot of uh, drug which was encapsulating in the liposome so that's where the doxorubicin research ended up in the form of a doxil product first launched in us in the year 1997 when i joined in pharmacy okay i started my career in 1997 in pharmacy now i see uh, what we read in the book is uh, doxorubicin liposome is uh, innovator is alza corporation that is not the factual information what happened is originally it started in a company called liposome technology inc so they manufactured which was also a part of this three member group who were working on the long circulation process of the liposome so it was original innovator were these four groups but a lot of contribution uh, goes to rich uh, professor uh, baron holds and his team at uh, uh, hebrew university in israel okay so they were working on this so liposome technology inc is the first company which launched the uh, doxorubicin liposome in the market then later in 1996 uh, it was changed to a company called sequos in 97 or 96 end or 97 beginning sequos was purchased by alza corporation that's where alza corporation comes into picture right all the scientists are gone and what we remember is alza corporation now later alza corporation in 2011 when we were doing research uh, in the industry so this they had a problem in the um, uh, orthobiotic lab in ontario so uh, they stopped the manufacturing and at that time this company was sold to uh, johnson and johnson now johnson and johnson is doing the uh, manufacturing and sales of this product what happens is uh, it needs lot of investment you imagine 1979 they started when i was born 1997 the product was launched in the market with professors with brains uh, uh, like gabizon uh, like um, uh, there were so many people there, there were one teresa and there was uh, papa zodos um, uh, so a lot of teams were involved and it takes a lot of time to do research in these kind of areas even to be honest to create a generic version of this product it was so tough while going through a fda scrutiny or european scrutiny so first we filed in uh, fda and we got an uh, approval in us fda so uh, it takes a lot of time uh, to make a generic product not the innovator product imagine uh, the generic product itself we started somewhere like 2005 uh, let's imagine 2005 is gone so 2006 to somewhere 2015 we filed the product we got the approval in 2017 so that means almost to the tune of 12 years anta man anta kada oka puskaram after 12 years again godavari puskaram will come or krishna puskaram will come or some other puskaram will come so it almost took like 12 years to create a generic version so that means you need to put a lot of money in this kind of research and you should have a lot of dedicated team and a lot of patience to be involved to be successful so that's where people have burned their fingers and they don't 
dare to venture into this kind of research but once you get a product you know the uh, what do you call the returns are very high so that's what keeps people motivating even uh, small scale industries or medium sized industries have started uh, working uh, in this field so that's the current industrial perspective of liposomes nanoparticles microparticles so every field is difficult it's not so easy because the drug is soluble you can put so easily into a liposome or the drug is insoluble it's difficult to put into a liposome or you want a sub sustained release for 3 months in a microparticle form it is so easy because the drug is soluble what is there it's a plg microsphere it's not so easy so it takes a lot of of time but nevertheless we need to have a lot of focus we need to have a lot of enthusiasm a lot of patience is required basically a lot of patience a lot of money is uh, invested in these kind of projects but ultimately once you come successful you recover uh, all your investment and uh, so that's where a lot of companies have started investing in these uh, areas so that's all uh, from my side hope i could explain something about liposomes thank you very much for giving me the opportunity Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you for sir. Thank uh, you. expertise talk and spending your valuable time for enlightening us. Sir, what there is one question, sir. Yeah. Are there are there any other marketed liposome products? Yes, yes. You have amphotericin B. You have uh, uh, this. Um, uh, th th that's again amphotericin B. Is uh, ambisome is a liposome. Then you have a very good product called uh, donorubicin lipomethacetabine, um, uh, which is uh, a combination or synergistic drug combination, which is there in the market. you have irnotican liposome in the market they are in the commercial scale uh, you have um, uh, some uh, foam technologies like bupivacan liposome is there that's not a unilamellar liposome there are a lot of liposomes and a lot of liposomes are expected to hit the market but uh, one question from my side sir do we require any freeze or dry up for uh, preparation of liposomes or yes not all the liposomes for example amphotericin p liposome is there we need uh, a freeze dryer because uh, those liposomes are not very stable okay then uh, for example uh, we have uh, this uh, citrabine and donorubicin combination vixios for that also we need a uh, freeze dryer because uh, always uh, you cannot have the liposome in the liquid form because of lipid degradation or some other issues so uh, majority of the times we need uh, uh, lyophilizer for lyophilizing the liposomes which enhances the physical stability of the liposomes over a period of time thank you sir thank you very much the participants are requested to post their questions in the chat box i can't see anything if there are any questions let me know okay, just we'll see a couple of minutes sir. so yeah, thank yeah, you sir no, thank no. you very much for your uh, valuable talk sir we have got enlightened with your talk So it covered all the aspects of liposomes, uh, including the preparation, manufacturing, and what are the various uh, encapsulation techniques. Now I request Ramna sir. Okay, okay. To say a few words on couple of things. Yeah, Patra sir, very, uh, very thankful to you sir for readily accepting our invitation sir. Thank you sir. So Dr. Patra sir has explained the basics of liposomes in an elaborate manner, especially. the geometric consideration for forming bilayer structure she also sir explained what are liposomes especially the mechanism involved in the formation of a bilayer structure of liposomes and sir in a industrial perspective manner how this uh, doxorubicin hydrochloride liposomes are going to formulate it especially the steel the liposomes that is a pegylated liposomes are very useful so because uh, they are having high epr effect so because of this one the prolonged circulation they are suitable for the passive, passive targeting sir also explained the passive targeting approach for the delivery of liposomes to the tumor site especially the responsible parameters for delivering the liposomes to the target the parameters like size of the liposomes pegylation of liposome entrapment of drug inside the liposome stability of the liposomes during the formulation time and also during the circulation time also the manufacturing process especially in the industry what they are using so the film hydration technique so in this technique the multilamellar vesicles are going to produce so you have to reduce the particle size so for that they are using high pressure homogenization and extrusion techniques with the advantages and disadvantages sir has explained in a, a nice manner then sir has explained the drug loading techniques also especially the passive loading techniques and active loading techniques and also the filtration and filling procedures also 
especially the main part of this liposomal preparation is the characterization is very very important so in the industrial uh, uh, scenario the size and size distribution by using zeta, zeta sizer drug assay technique lipid assay techniques entrapment and free drug content estimation dissolution studies especially the sterility and bet uh, test and especially the t tem transmission electron microscope is very very useful so finally dr patro sir narrated the liposomal success story so that is very very useful to our uh, young uh, pharmacy fraternity sir so definitely we will follow your advices also uh, once again we are very thankful to you sir for readily accepting our invitation for delivering a talk on the uh, recent trends in the liposomal formulation and industry perspective thank you very yeah. much sir thank you thank you so thank our, you, our, our our principal madam will uh, uh, will share something sir madam i am not able to see you Hi, sir. <laughs> Very good morning, Girijaji. Hello, madam. Yeah, fine, fine. Yeah. Thank you, Patroji, for your nice presentation. Yeah, thank you. The session was so informative. You have enlightened the participants about novel approaches in liposomes, especially in advanced characterization. Technique. Initially, the first part I was missed. Later on, I joined. Yeah. Thank you so much for seeing you. you through virtual platform. Thank you, man. Thank you. Looking Thank forward you. to do great work with you. Yes. Thank you, man. Thank you. Anything, any, any help you need for nanoparticles characterization or liposome characterization, you can always approach me. Now we are uh, very close to IIT Bombay, so there are there is everything, madam. In India, we don't explore. That's the only thing. Uh, believe it or not, in IIT Bombay, we have everything to characterize liposome or nanoparticle. Everything, anything, okay, and sir, everything. Definitely, definitely, sir. We'll utilize your services, yeah. sir. Yeah. <laughs> That's you very cheap, also. Yeah. 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 Whenever you, you are coming to Vijayawada, you please visit. Uh, we always uh, here to receive you. Yeah, madam. Madam, keep. My salt ready. So anytime I'll come and take it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, madam. Always welcome. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you madam. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Dear participants, we'll meet tomorrow with the session four. Presented by Dr. K. Kandan, Sir Emeritus Professor, St. John's uh, College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Kerala. So, dear uh, participants, tomorrow we have a very uh, useful lecture uh, that is DOE, Design of Experiments, a powerful tool for uh, pharmaceutical research. So, it is going to deliver by Dr. K. Kannan, an Emeritus Professor from uh, Trisur, Kerala, St. James College of Pharmaceutical Sciences. So, thank you for uh, um, participation. So, see you tomorrow by 10.30 a.m. Thank you. Have a good day.